guys welcome to another lecture and today we'll be discussing something about common worm infest infestations in pediatric population before i begin i would like to request you to like share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so very very important that there might be chronic worm infestations there are multiple chronic worm infestation in pediatric population and they are usually classified into two variants one are the in intestinal worms and second are the extra intestinal so what are the intestinal worms and what are their clinical features so usually this intestinal worms all intestinal worms have two common clinical features what are they one is growth stunting growth stunting and there is presence of cognitive deficit cognitive deficit okay so these are a common clinical features for all chronic worm infestation in pediatric population so individually ascariasis which is also known as the round worm this round worm ascariasis actually causes vitamin a malabsorption it may lead to intestinal obstruction it may lead to presence of cholangitis. How? Cholangitis and pancreatitis can be caused. How? Because when they live at the ampulla of waiter, okay, whenever they when whenever they might be living on the ampulla of waiter, they can block the opening. Uh, duct of Centaurini and duct of Virsung might be blocked. It may lead to cholangitis and pancreatitis. Along with this, the larva can cause asthma, acute eosinophilic rise, acute eosinophilic pneumonitis, one variant of acute eosinophilic pneumonitis due to migrating in the larva. Okay, the larva that gets migrated. Now, the most common site or the most common location of ascariasis is in jejunum and ileum. Okay. Okay. And the uh, treatment we will see later on. So, uh, ascariasis, these are the common clinical features. Then, trichuris, trichuria. Trichuris. This trichuris can cause colitis, colitis, and intestinal inflammation. Along with this, it may lead to trichuris dysentery syndrome. And this dysentery and even the diarrhea or the loose stool will be either acute or even chronic. Long term, it might lead to chronic. Okay. So, this is about trichuris. It lives in colon. So, it leads to colitis. Okay. Now, the next worm is hookworm, Necator americanus and Ankylostoma duodenale. Hookworm. Now, this hookworm usually leads to iron deficiency anemia and that is usually all that it causes. Along with this, the larva migraines may also lead to cutaneous clinical features and even the pulmonary uh, pneumonitis. See, in the specific pulmonary pneumonitis or the AEP that is seen with ascariasis is known as Loeffler syndrome. Okay. And, uh, you know, there is eosinophilia present because there is see whenever this larva are there in the bloodstream or whenever they are with contact with the cells what happens is that there is a release of interleukin 4 interleukin 5 interleukin 9 10 and 13 and this in turn uh, is, is actually a th2 mediated response helper 2 resp response and there is increase in eosinophils and mast cells okay so that is why usually all the eosinophilia is seen hookworm usually resides uh, this hookworm usually resides in the proximal one third proximal one third of intestine Okay. Proximal one third of intestine, while the next is strongyloides. Strongyloides. Now, this strongyloides stercoralis may lead to either enteritis or when you use either steroids, when the steroids are used or whenever the patient is infected. If the steroids are used, systemic steroids or infected patient with HTLV1, this may lead to hyper. Hyperinfection with strongyloides or hyperinfection syndrome. 
okay the spondylitis larva or the uh, the worms rampage throughout the body and wreak havoc and may lead to multi organ dysfunction syndrome okay so this might occur spondylitis are usually found in duodenum and jejunum only okay then the next thing is entrobius entrobius vermicular is also known as pinworm entrobius now this entrobius usually causes anal pruritus and usually it lives in colon and uh, the fish tapeworm di diphylobothrium diphylobothrium latum this leads to b12 deficiency tapeworm fish tapeworm and this can reside in the small intestine and even in large intestine and there is a record like 12 feet 11 feet long worms are also there and even in meters those worms were there in some patients it is extremely painful though okay now next are the schistosomias extra intestinal features so schistosomias themselves schistosomias themselves actually have all patients have growth abnormality they have cognitive abnormality and they have anemia okay now they are grossly divided into two types. One is urogenital and second is intestinal. Okay. Urogenital is uh, schistosoma hematobium and intestinal is japonicum and uh, mansoni. Okay. Japonicum and mansoni. So urogenital will cause hematuria, bladder cancer, hydronephrosis, renal failure, and hydronephrosis, like I told before, hydronephrosis, and even the uh, infection of bladder, like bladder swelling and uh, dry bladder might occur. Intestinal, usually this worm reside, the intestinal worm reside in the venous drainage of the small intestine. They are, in, they reside in the veins. So they may lead to periportal fibrosis, periportal fibrosis with intestinal bleeding. Okay, so these are the basic about the worms. Now, how to treat these worms? They are annoying. But see, uh, you have to understand one thing that treatment of treatment of all the worms, all the worms except except strongyloides, except strongyloides and diphylobothrium latum. The drug of choice is albendazole 400 mg uh, for 3 days, single dose or 3 days or mebendazole, mebendazole 500 mg single dose. Okay, so this is enough for all of the worms except strongyloides. Now for strongyloides actually the drug of choice is Ivermectin, Ivermectin 200 microgram per kg per day, 200 microgram per kg per day. But Ivermectin is contraindicated in patients who are infected with loa loa because if there is presence of loa loa in the body and you give Ivermectin, the patient will deteriorate and face encephalitis. There might be presence of encephalitis. So that is why you have to make sure that loa loa is not there or else give albendazole in those patients also. Okay, for diphylobothrium latum, for schistosomiasis, for diphylobothrium latum and schistosomiasis, the drug of choice is praziquantel. Praziquantel, that is also given for a single dose. Okay, a single dose of praziquantel is given and that is enough. The dose is 20 mg per kg per day. So only single dose is enough. Uh, you may give it for two days. Safe OD may do two do two days. That is enough. So uh, this is about the summary of infections, worm infection and infestation in pediatric population. I hope you like this video, and I will see you in the next one.